Sean Pierce Johnson here and welcome back to my studio where today we are going to be taking a look at the brand new Blues 1530 amplifier from Bootlayer Guitar. This is a great 1x12 combo amplifier, very much in the American school of amplifier thought and in the very old school way of thinking for amplifiers. There's not a whole lot of frills to this thing, it's very simple and straight to the point but at the very same time, still versatile enough for the modern guitar player and the, uh, the pedal addict like myself. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features and then I'll show you a few of the different sounds that you can get with the clean and the overdrive channel and show you my favorite way of getting tone out of the Blues 1530. <laughs> is two channels, a clean and an overdrive channel, all two with 12 AT7s in the preamp, 6L6s in the power section, one by 12 combo amplifier, class A analog throughout. Very old school, very classic American with the 6L6 thing going on and uh, sounding really nice. The control panel is very, very simple. Each of the channels, the clean channel and the overdrive channel have their own individual gain controls, which to me on the clean channel takes you from that nice glassy clean that we typically associate with like black or silver face fenders to that pushed thing like you can get with certain tweed deluxes and the like. And then with the overdrive channel, this isn't necessarily like, say, having a really distorted channel on your, the amplifier. Instead, the way that I like to look at the overdrive channel is there is a tube screamer, like a tube tube screamer overdrive pedal in front of the clean channel that allows you to get like that classic low, slightly honky mid-range sound for the pushed bluesy stuff, but you can definitely veer it into the territory of say, maybe like an overdrive special or a steel string singer if you play your cards right and you know what you're doing with the controls. Both channels share a common EQ with bass, middle, and treble. There's a master volume. It has a built-in reverb tank, which isn't quite a drippy reverb tank. It's more, think less uh, Ventures and more Pink Floyd kind of reverb. It's a little darker, a little bit more washy, which sits just fine with me. And then there's also a master presence control, which uh, I feel like is the real secret weapon of the whole of the amplifier. It can really help you get more out of this amplifier, especially when using pedals. The cool thing about this amplifier though, is it has a built-in effects loop with the send and return right on the front panel. So you can see me plugged up in there and ready to go to show you how I like to use the effects loop later on. There is a foot switch jack that allows you to switch between the clean and the overdrive channel. We're not gonna worry about the foot switch. I can just reach right over and change the channels today. And then we also have an extension speaker output, uh, which is pretty awesome in case you want to, well, I don't know, make your rig sound a little bigger or if you need to place a speaker cab at the other side of the stage for your bandmates. It's right there for you. It's really awesome. Other than that, on the front panel, we have our power selector, which allows us to switch between 30 watts and 15 watts. You're gonna wanna make sure that you do that before you get started playing. Uh, if you do that while the amplifier is on, you might run into some issues, might even blow up the amplifier. I'm not even gonna say that that's actually gonna happen, but I don't wanna take any chances, so. We're gonna go ahead and leave it in the 30 watt position for now, and then I'll switch it down to 15 and show you the differences there. We have our standby switch, our power switch, 
And that's pretty much everything on the front panel. And then, of course, we have to talk about some of the other things in it, namely the 100 watt Celestion Hot 100 speaker. So you're not gonna need to worry about blowing your speaker out. This speaker keeps up with this amplifier and makes this 30 watts sound humongous. Oh man. I think we just need to stop talking and I should show you guys a bit about this amplifier's sounds. Let's start on the clean channel. All right, I have the amp set in the 30 watt mode and this is with the sound that we get with every single knob on the amplifier at 12 o'clock. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that, but I was varying my pick attack during that to see how touch sensitive I could be with it. And well, Now, when I approach a new amplifier that I've never played for the first time, I immediately do this, set all knobs to 12 o'clock and then adjust the taste. Honestly, if I'm just plugging this guy into that right there, I'm really happy because the guitar sounds exactly like the guitar. It doesn't feel too colored. <laughs> Something that we could definitely put a tube screamer in front of, I think, which, uh, why don't we? I have the JHS Bonsai on the floor in the TS-10 mode. really, really well. Awesome. But let's see if we can just, you know, add a little bit more volume to that. And I'm just going to play some kind of pretty arpeggio stuff right now. We started out with a really great clean tone that was even across the frequency spectrum. This gets us our classic American scooped mid sound. But what if we push the gain a little bit more on the clean channel? <laughs> That's really nice, and it's very fast attack, very kind of, it's kind of stiff, but at the same time, those fast, that fast attack really keeps up with, say, you know. <laughs> It doesn't feel like the amp is lagging behind me too much, which is really kind of nice. Let's just push the gain a little bit farther and see how much we can really get out of this channel. <laughs> You can really do a lot with this clean channel. It really does feel like it starts to veer into the second channel's territory so that channel two can pick up where it leaves off. 
And with that in mind, let's go ahead and switch over to the overdrive channel. Push the button right there. Gonna go ahead and set all knobs to 12 o'clock. Let's do the same thing. You can sense already that the overdrive channel doesn't get this like searing thing starting out. It, it, it's a very old school kind of overdrive, very basement JTM 45 kind of vibe going on. Let's see if we can uh, push the gain a little bit farther. One of the things I do notice with this, I think mine might have a microphonic tube in it, is that I push the gain past three o'clock and it starts to get that high pitch whine thing going on. So that that's kind of a little bit of a, uh, not so great. I might have to replace a tube in it and I don't have any spare 12 AT7s, so gonna have to get some of those. But other than that, even at 12 o'clock, <laughs> That's a great place to start and build from there. Let's go ahead and darken it up, push the treble, push the mids, considerably lower the bass and up the volume. And we're gonna do something maybe a little bit like early plexi. <laughs> We made the amp a little upset there, but that was sounding really good. And that little light strum right there at the end that I did, that actually was light and it cleaned up. Now let's check out the boost in front of the overdrive channel. Now this is really cool because it does a couple different things. It does pre and post gain. So we'll get a little bit of an up in volume, but we'll also get some more saturation out of it. <laughs> It gives a lot of extra body to it as well, which uh, is pretty cool for 12 o'clock with a gain boost. 
fatten it up, get a little bit more saturation, up the level a bit. But let's play around with that. I'm gonna darken this up, pump up the mids and the bass a little bit, turn the presence daub down all the way, push the gain a little bit more, and see if this gets us into that dumbly territory. <laughs> turn the bass down just a little bit. See how much more gain we can get out of this. That's a good sound. That's a keeper right there. Now let's go back to the clean channel and listen to this reverb. a lot, which uh, can be a good thing or a bad thing, because I think anywhere past 12 o'clock, it actually starts to get in the way of the guitar a little bit. I tend to leave it right about there, and that's pretty good for me, especially if I want to slap on just a little bit of chorus and, uh, you know, have a little bit more vibey, clean fun. So when it comes to using the Blues 1530 with pedals, this is how I like to set it up. Something that starts out fairly clean, but if I dig into it, is actually going to, you know, crunch up just ever so slightly. <laughs> Now you notice I have the presence down low. Now this is where I'm gonna show you how great this presence control can be for helping tame the amplifier for pedals. Now, 
let's go for a clean sound. I like my Walrus Audio Fathom. I have the TC Flashback 2 in the 2290 mode and a Warp Vinyl Hi-Fi for great warbly, chorusy kind of stuff. all that pretty well especially with that big dark long decay reverb on the fathom any amp that is this low of wattage I, I tend to be a little reticent of because I'm just not so sure how the power section is going to handle that buildup of repeats of echoes and decays of reverbs the blues 1530 handles that really well. But conversely, what about overdrive pedals? Well, I have the Wayhuge Electronics Fat Sandwich on the board as well, which is a pedal that I'm rediscovering now and that I find really works well in front of this amplifier. <laughs> pedal that I've often fought with because it is so sensitive to how you have the amplifier set. As a matter of fact, testing it the other night, I was plugged into a different amplifier and I had to change settings on here and it felt like, oh no, I'm messing too much with it. That's where the presence control on this amp really helped out. Where I have it set right now... <laughs> I feel like that's a good amount of high end and body that it, it's very well balanced. Well, what if I darken it up all the way? It does okay, but what if I go back to the clean tone? It's not terrible, but it, it's not what I remember having. So, okay, turn it up with the distortion on. Starting to hear a little bit of harshness to it. Definitely hearing harshness. That's where we get that high end that really just doesn't sit right. I found the magic spot for pedals for me with this amplifier is right around that nine to 10 o'clock range. And it just takes the fat sandwich and every other overdrive I have on the floor really. <laughs> thing 
I want to show you guys is if there's any tonal difference between the 30 watt mode and the 15 watt mode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set an overdrive sound on the amplifier, play it in 30 watts and then play it in 15 watts. It will A, B back and forth and you can decide for yourself whether or not there's a tonal difference. <laughs> Friends, that is your look at the Blues 1530 amplifier from Bootlayer Guitar. There's a lot to like about this amplifier. I love the fact that we were able to, on both the clean and overdrive channel, put both channels with all knobs at noon and start with a great foundational tone and build off everything from there. It takes every pedal that I've ever thrown at it, whether it's in the front end or in the effects loop, amazingly well. I'm very, very surprised that a low watt amplifier, whether it's in 30 watts or 15 watts, takes pedals like this. I'd say if there's really only one gripe I have with this amplifier, it's that I think that there is a microphonic tube inside of it. Now, there are 12AT7s in here. I don't have spares of those, and I didn't want to go replacing it with a 12AX7 because then it wouldn't be representative of what you guys would be buying for yourselves, and that would just be not a very honest thing to do. But even still, there are settings that I'm not getting that high-pitched noise in the sound that I'm playing, and it's perfectly fine, and I'm having an absolute blast with it. Oh, and the other thing about the reverb, it builds up a little too much past 12 o'clock and, and doesn't really feel like a reverb kind of just gets in the way, but I tend to keep it on the subtle side anyway as sort of a foundational reverb, put a reverb in the effects loop and build up to ambient through there. And one last little endorsement for it, this amp has 6L6 tubes. 6L6 tubes and I don't normally get along and I like this amplifier. That's pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at this amplifier as much as I've enjoyed showing it off to you. If you did and you want to help support the channel and appease the YouTube algorithm, please do give this video a thumbs up, share the link with your friends, and of course, comment in the comment section below and click the subscribe button, also ringing that notification bell. Boy, you have to do a lot of things to enjoy YouTube these days. But hey, We'll come back for more fun very, very soon. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with me today. Have a great rest of yours, and I will see you next time. I'm Sean Pierce Johnson, wishing you all out there great tone, good health, and happy stomping. Cheers, friends. We'll see you next time. God bless. It didn't even go there. <laughs>